Alright, welcome back Bio. We got another video lecture here. This one's video lecture number nine and it's on this idea of regulating the cell cycle. So this idea of regulating the cell cycle, it basically means the cell has to kind of control when it can divide and create new cells and when it can't. And this idea of regulation is an important concept um, for a lot of reasons. One is cells divide for for important reasons to like repair injury or grow and develop um, and it's important to know why they would want to divide or why they wouldn't want to divide and so we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, some of the proteins and things that cause a cell to divide and when it would would want to divide and when it wouldn't divide um, and then we'll get to the end of the lecture where we'll get into just very, very briefly the idea of cancer um, which you know, in the most basic explanation, cancer is this idea of a cell that has gone sort of haywire where it's dividing uncontrollably and not regulating its division correctly. So, um, which can lead to the formation of these tumors that can eventually impact the health of the person or the organism that has that cancer. Um, but let's start off a little bit more simply, which is talking about the, um, the general idea of regulating the cell cycle. So, when you look at this um, first slide here, just kind of an overview of what cell cycle regulators are. And so essentially they're proteins, uh, which we've talked about. Um, and they're just like a protein like we would have talked about with enzymes and other kinds of proteins that exist. There's also specific proteins that is jo their job is to regulate when the cell can divide and when it doesn't divide. Um, and these proteins, they respond to internal and external events. So they will they, it would, they just don't decide randomly. They'll actually decide to, to go through with cell division or stop cell division depending on what's going on either inside the cell or outside the cell. Um, so I'll give you a couple examples here of some um, instances when uh, a cell might stop or start. So one example is when you have an injury like a cut of some kind, what's going to happen is at the edge of that cut those cells are stimulated to divide quickly to repair the, the, the injury and basically seal up the cut. So um, that would be an example of an external signal for the cells around the edge of the injury to start dividing so that we can heal the wound. Another example would be like within mitosis, which if you forget what mitosis is, that is the technical term for cell division. Oops, let's go back. We'll get to those interesting pictures in a second. Uh, but the idea of cell division is, uh, is when cells divide. It's called mitosis, so that's a term you should know. Um, but for example, when a cell divides, it needs to make sure that the DNA in the cell is copied and then split evenly between the two cells that come from the division. So if the cells, if the DNA that's in the form of chromosomes don't line up correctly during the division, the cell will stop the division because they know that it will mess up and it will get the wrong number of chromosomes and you have DNA that's too much DNA in one cell and not enough in the other and then the whole thing is, is ruined and messed up so the cell will stop. The proteins will recognize that issue and stop the cells from dividing. So just a couple of examples of how uh, some signals that a cell could receive would either stop it from dividing or s let it continue to divide. So those pictures that you saw flash up earlier, I just wanted to point out some interesting examples of how um, these cell cycle regulators respond to various things. One was like if there's an injury. In this case, what you're looking at here are a couple examples of lip plates, neck rings, and the gauge earrings that some people like to wear. And basically what you're looking at here is a signal to the cells in the area that's being stretched to divide more. So what will happen when cells are sort of pressured and the tissue is sort of being stretched out and it's under tension. Like for example, when you put a plate in your lip, right? Or when you insert an earring or when you start stacking these rings around your neck, what it's doing is it's stretching the tissue a little bit. And that tension that's put on the tissue causes the cells to divide. So that just the sheer tension on the skin, for example, in this lip would cause the cells to divide and get and create more and more tissue so to alleviate the tension that's existing. Now, of course, these are some extreme examples you see here of people who take it, who are use, utilizing that idea of cells dividing and creating more cells to continually stretch and stretch and stretch out some part of their body. Right? But this couldn't be possible. These gigantic plates here in the lips, 
or the, the, these big gauge earrings, they're not possible unless cells respond to that pressure and divide more. Because if they didn't, this wouldn't be possible. You couldn't continue to stretch the skin and create more and more tissue. All right, so let's focus in on two, um, one, one protein in specific called P53, and then a group of proteins called cyclins. So P53 is one of the most important cell cycle regulating proteins that, are, that we know of. And it, what its job is, is it's responsible for, the, for gene expression. Um, and what gene expression is, and remember, genes are the um, instructions for proteins. Instructions for proteins. So what P53 does is it is responsible for allowing a gene to create a protein or it will stop the, the gene from creating a protein. So basically the idea is when a gene is expressed it, it is a, used to make a protein. When it's blocked and not expressed it is not used to make a protein. And P53 happens to be a specific and important protein that is responsible for blocking or allowing the, it's the creation of other proteins. And because it's, it's regulating whether other proteins can be made or not, it's sometimes called the guardian of the genome because it's, it's sort of in charge of um, making sure that the right genes are being expressed at the right times. Cyclins, on the other hand, are a group of proteins that's main job is to give the cell the signal to move on to the next phase of cell division. So there's all these steps along the way as a cell divides until eventually it completely divides into two. Cyclins, their job is to, is to um, basically monitor that process. And they go, okay, is everything good? We're all lined up, everything is okay. Okay, move to the next phase of cell division. All right, next phase. Is everything lined up? Okay, all right, we're good. Move to the next one. So cyclins are kind of like the, uh, the monitoring proteins. They kind of watch and make sure things are okay as the cell goes through those steps. Um, and it turns out that P53 controls the expression of those cyclins. So P53 is sort of like the big important protein that monitors all of cell division and will, uh, will decide whether or not the cell is ready to move on. If it is, it will allow the cyclins to be expressed and then they get the cell to move to the next phase. So basically you have P53 that controls the cyclins and those cyclins control the cell division process going from one phase to the next. It's okay. Mr. Herjarian just walked in while I was doing a video lecture. No worries. Um, so what I want to do um, at this point is move on to a little bit more. So now that we, so these two proteins, P53 and these and cyclins, are going to be the main proteins that we want to know about as far as um, cell cycle regulation. Um, and so we can kind of think about this idea of okay, where do we expect cells to go through the cell cycle or go through mitosis more than other places? So some good examples would be like at the at a root tip or a fish blastula. Uh, a root tip, of course, because that's plants' way. The plants will sort of their roots will grow out into the soil, seeking water and minerals. And so, at the tip of a root, it's constantly extending and growing. So you would expect there to be a lot of cell division there as the cells are dividing to allow that root tip to continue to grow. And then a fish uh, blastula, on the other hand, is a um, is a it's the very beginning of a fish embryo, where you have a lot of cells dividing in order to start the process of creating a fish. So it's like um, the very beginnings of the fish. And you'd expect that to be dividing quickly because the fish is going to be created. And it's the beginning of that. If you look at human cells, um, it's important to note that not all of our cells go through the cell, cell cycle at the same rate. Some, gar fa some divide faster, some divide slower, and some actually don't divide at all. Um, and so it depends on the kind of cell as far as um, determining how fast it divides or whether it divides at all. Um, so I want you to think about this um, a little bit on your own. Which uh, cells do you think in your body would need to be dividing a lot? And which cells do you think would maybe not need to divide a lot because they're able to live long? And so the way to think about it is what are the places in your body where cells would be short-lived, like dying a lot and need to be replaced? And what are the locations where cells would be living for a long time 
and not need to be replaced so often. So just think about that. We'll go over it in class. So what determines um, the lifespan of a cell? Like what determines when a cell gets to the end of its life and it can no longer divide anymore and it will die? Well, it turns out that one of the key factors are something called uh, telomeres, which you see down here at the bottom. Uh, the telomere is the end of a chromosome. So the red tips you see here on this image, those are the telomeres. And the blue in the middle is where, the, where all the genes are that are important for making proteins. And it turns out that every time a cell divides, a little bit of the ends of each chromosome are lost, deleted. It's just a natural thing that happens when cells divide. And it turns out that after a certain number of divisions, the telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter. Every time it divides, a little bit more is removed, a little bit more. And as soon as the entire telomere is gone, you start losing the blue part, which is the really important part, where all the genes are for all the proteins that our body needs. Once a cell gets into that blue part, it will be, uh, it will self-destruct. So the cell has a um, sort of a self-destruct mechanism that it knows to sort of commit cell suicide when it reaches a point of starting to damage the important DNA and it's gone through its telomere. So that's kind of one of the things we know that determines how long a cell will live, is how long it takes to get through its telomere. It's almost like, you can almost think of the telomere as like a little buffer, a little, a little cap at the end of the chromosome to protect the important information in the middle. So um, I, the reason why I said telomeres are, are one of the factors for cells lifespan, um, and, and one, of the, one of the factors that leads to um, are aging. So as we get older, of course, right, if you think about a human being or an organism in general, as it gets older, it's going to have more and more cells dividing, and the telomeres of that organism are going to be shorter and shorter and shorter. And so one of the thoughts is that uh, one of the reasons why we age is this idea of more of our cells are losing their telomeres and having to destroy themselves, uh, and that's one of the causes of aging. But it's not the only thing. There are some other things here. So telomere shortening is right there. Some other uh, things of why we age is just as we get older, Right, risk factors for certain diseases that might, um, you know, deteriorate our health go up. Things like that they get worse and worse. Um, oxidative stress is another thing that might happen. So, um, just as we age, oftentimes things like DNA and proteins and our lipids in our body, our biomolecules get damaged just because they've been around for a long time. This is called oxidative stress. Um, and then this is called glycosylation or glycolation rather. Um, which is when the sugar that we we need for energy uh, actually starts to bind and get and inhibit things like our biomolecules, like DNA and proteins and lipids. It will just sort it sort of gets st it sticks to them and causes them to function less efficiently. So those are some other reasons why we get older and we age. Um, and so just to kind of get to the last couple things here, um, I want to talk about stem cells and I want to talk about uh, cancer just briefly at the end. So stem cells, what are stem cells? Well, you've probably heard of them. You might not know exactly what they are, but the easy way in a very basic description of what a stem cell is, is it is a, a non-specialized cell that is not, has not become any specific kind of cell. Like, for example, a cell that is in your, like a skin cell or a liver cell or an eye cell or a brain cell, those are all specialized. They've become a certain kind of cell. A stem cell is just like almost like a blank slate and it can become pretty much any kind of cell um, depending on the signals it gets and what it needs to become. So we call them non-specialized and they're non-specialized because they are not anything specific yet. And it turns out that these stem cells have a particularly long life. They can last for quite a while and one of the reasons why they last so long is because they produce an enzyme called telomerase, which actually goes back in and adds some of that telomere back on to prevent it from getting too short. Um, I give you an example here of some of uh, some stem cells that you might find in your bone marrow. So you've got, you know, inside every bone of your body, you have uh, something called marrow, and that marrow is where all of your uh, blood cells are created. Um, and so you're constantly making blood cells all day, every day. 
um, and you have some stem cells in your bone marrow that turn into those blood cells when you need them. So those are an example of some stem cells. All right, almost done here. Let's just kind of talk about cancer in a really brief, basic way. Um, so what is cancer? Like I mentioned at the beginning, cancer is an uncontrolled cell division in which the cell is able to divide indefinitely or forever, basically. Um, and it doesn't stop and it goes really, really fast. It just keeps dividing and dividing and dividing crazily. Um, and it also turns out that one of the reasons why cancer is able to divide so crazily and not stop is because it also makes telomerase, the same thing that stem cells use to keep their telomeres long, cancer does too. Uh, and that's you know, one of the reasons why cancer doesn't sort of just die out on its own. Like you'd expect if it's dividing uncontrollably, we wouldn't have eventually just have to um, die because it would run out of telomeres and then start deleting some of its important DNA. It would, but turns out because it makes that telomerase, it can keep going. Um, the other thing about cancer that's really unique to it compared to regular cells that are not cancerous is that the cell does not respond to the regulating proteins. So even if p53 and cyclins are trying to tell it to stop dividing, it just doesn't listen. It just keeps going and divides fast and furious without any breaks. So it's kind of like a runaway cell that's gone rogue and has just gone to do its own crazy thing, um, which eventually will hurt the organism in the long run. So here's sort of a, a little image I like to show of the uh, comparing a um, normal cell versus a cancerous cell. And what you're looking at here is in the top image, uh, you have a normal cell where if the cell becomes damaged, right at this location right here, it's damaged, what it'll do is it will actually commit suicide called apoptosis. That's a term that means cell death. Um, and cells will commit apoptosis when they need to, if it's a correct cell. If it's a cancerous cell, look what happens. There's a malfunction here, and you get this big mass of cells called a tumor. And that's an uncontrolled cell growth. And that's exactly what happens in a cancer cell. It doesn't do, this, it doesn't do the same things that a normal cell would do in, the case, in that case. So what causes cancer? I'm sure you know of many things that have been talked about and linked to cancer, um, but cancer is, is something that we, we know quite a bit about, but we still don't know everything about it. So a couple things to keep in mind is that there's many, many factors. It's not just one thing that causes cancer, right? Like you don't just smoke one cigarette and suddenly you have lung cancer. Um, there's a lot of things that contribute and lead to cancer. Um, so you need a couple things. Some gen you need mutations. So you need to have some mutations in your DNA, and those can be caused by genetics, like you could be born with those mutations. Um, but we also know that you can develop those mutations throughout your life um, by exposing yourself to certain chemicals or certain kinds of environments that would damage your DNA. Um, so what are, what are some of those things that we know that cause cancer? Some environmental things that you might be exposed to tobacco smoke, right, the sun, radiation, some viruses and bacteria. We know that having an unhealthy body weight and unhealthy diet increases your risk of cancer. So if you're overweight and you're eating poorly, your risk of cancer goes up. If you drink too much alcohol, your risk of cancer goes up. Um, and so all of these things here are called carcinogens because they cause or are known to and cause cancer. All right. So I believe that that is the end of this uh, cell cycle regulation PowerPoint. If you have any questions, let me know. We're going to go over more about cancer and that kind of thing in class. Um, but I wanted to sort of introduce you to the basics here. All right. I'll see you in class.